Over the past week, Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority raised the alert on the latest leakage from Level 1 to Level 3, and Tokyo's foreign minister returned from a trip to Russia's Chernobyl for advice. The worldwide critics of Japan's mishandling of the crisis are growing, and despite Japan beginning to reach out for help, what can the world's community of scientists and engineers do to help? We are joined by a Professor Sogunyal from Seoul National University's Nuclear Engineering Department. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, Professor Sa, do you think Japan learned much from the foreign minister's visit to Russia? Um, I don't think so, because uh, if they have the learned the lessons in the true sense of the word, so then they should be in a much, much better position by now. They're actually failing. And it's a very good example of textbook picture of a failed management system, not just technology, but management system. So it's a human error. Well, why haven't the world's community of scientists and engineers rallied around Fukushima to help them fix the, this uh, radiation leakage crisis? I think they have rallied around the Fukushima plants. Actually, the U.S., French, Russian, and also that includes the Republic of Korea. We got together, actually tried to get together to help them around the problem. But again, they just simply turned their back on us and then just walked out a couple of years ago. So what do you make of the current strategies to stem the radiation leaks, such as installing freezing mechanisms for the mm -hmm. soil? Are they based on sound science? Uh, it sounds more like a sci-fi story because it's more like science fiction. Because think about, we call this permafrost, frosting the soil for minimum of 50 years and as long as 10,000 years. It's longer than human history, okay? It's just uh, unrealistic. So those ideas don't seem to be too sound, but Japan itself is known for advanced technology. Don't they have other solutions that they can apply? I think there's one last one, and that's probably trying to have a bypass of groundwater. So the only way around this problem might be coming up with a kind of a dam or something that can bypass this ground. But it's, again, very close to science fiction. So what's that mean? They are just, they just ran out of any ideas. That's why they came back to the international community and then asking for help. Well, many have also said that this is a problem with management and, uh, of course, uh, politics, areas outside of the purview of science. Now, how do scientists work with people uh, with mm -hmm. power uh, to make these, uh, this, these decisions? It's a good point because politicians tend to tend not to hear from the, you know, uh, you know, scientists and engineers. But it's time to do so because, uh, you know, they're thinking about 2020 Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo. So they really have to be get serious about this. Otherwise, there's no hope. Well, what are some of the ideas that you and your faculty mm. maybe banter about right. uh, within the uh, faculty lounge? Again, I can come back to Chernobyl because, you know, they chose to really put their plan, Chernobyl number four, in a concrete coffin, sarcophagus, okay? And that was the starting point, and probably that is the only way around. It's a little too late to be cooling these reactors with water because they tend to produce more and more contaminated or tainted water. So that's not the solution. Plan B was to put concrete sized up and down, okay? And just um, put it in the coffin like concrete but um, they sort of missed the opportunity by now it's too late it's just too much radioactive so nobody can have an access to the site so that means they have to employ the robots but robots tend to fail because of those electronic components go wrong whenever you go to near to the radiation site we call this source term then they tend to break down so what's the next I don't know they simply ran out of the solutions the, uh, the nuclear fallout uh, obviously mm -hmm. has negative effect on neighboring countries. Has there been a case where countries um, make a, uh, a sue another country for such oh, a... Oh, that's a very tough question, in fact, because uh, you see, uh, we can come back to Chernobyl again, okay? At the time, the accident took place in Pripyat, Chernobyl, which was used to be in the old USSR regime, okay? And then, but the um, countries like uh, Scandinavian countries, Norway, Finland, Sweden. They were the first to suffer and then realize what went wrong. So they almost 
went very close to suing the USSR, former USSR, now, now Ukraine. But uh, sort of they really uh, came up with an idea of gentleman's agreement that they rather chose to help USSR or Terminal 4. So they didn't um, really go deep into this suing the country, but this time it might be different because, you know, think about Japan. They're taking time and doing nothing. So maybe think about China, Hong Kong, Singapore, even Taiwan, plus Korea can get together and think about really suing Japan. Then they may get really serious about handling this situation in a more proper way than they've done so far. Maybe right. a good point to uh, really stimulate the Japanese as well as TAPCO to go into the right direction. Otherwise, they may just be repeating what they've done, which is doing nothing. In well, certainly, we hope that there is action soon because every day makes a uh, makes pollution that lasts what up to ten thousand years. You said exactly. Actually, they've been uh, contaminating the atmosphere, and then they've been contaminating the ocean. Now it's time for those radioactive water or actually tainted water to enter the food chain, then it gets real serious because, uh, you know, basically the uh, scallops and uh, clams and then smaller fish eat them and then bigger fish eat them, finally to uh, probably a tunas. And then at the top, we're there, humans. So they're going to come to our dinner table one of these days. So it's time to really think about seriously banning the import of those fisheries. But our government is not paying proper attention to that banning. So that's another big loophole there, right there. It certainly is. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Sal, for coming in today and for your insight tonight. Sure. Thank you. Looking forward to it.